everybody, this is Shayna Hiller from Build Your Personal Yoga Business. And today I'd like to talk about the top three ways to become a master. And I mean this, there is a difference between a teacher and a master. And each of us, all of you have the potential to become a master by following these three steps. So I'll call the, these steps the, the LLS, the learn it, live it, share it. First of all, in order to become a master of teaching yoga or of leading retreats or of hosting workshops or of building your personal yoga business and success in whatever way you connotate or, or define success requires patience. Patience is powerful beyond measure because a seed is patient before it becomes a tree. There is patience represented throughout nature all around us at every single time. And in my opinion, nature is a perfect signal and sign and hint as to how we as human beings ought to orient ourselves with our desires and with the world. So on the route, on the journey of becoming a master at whatever you do, but in this context, we'll talk about teaching yoga. The first thing is obviously to learn it. So some of you, most of you have already done a yoga teacher training. Some of you haven't done a yoga teacher training, which is great because you may be curious or starting to do some research about different trainings. And that is step one. You must learn it. If you have a desire to master anything in your life, you must learn it first. And that would be step one. What I find oftentimes is that people do step one and that's it. And it's like, well, I learned it. So now I should be a master. Now my career should be booming. Now I should have this many classes and this many students and this many retreats. But that's only step one is a learning piece. Once we learn how to become a yoga teacher, how to teach yoga, the second step is to live it. It is one thing to understand yoga, to be inspired by it. It's another thing to not practice truthfulness or non-harming or non-violence or balance or or cleanliness and all these different yamas and niyamas and actually practice physical yoga in our lives, right? It's one thing to say, well, I learned this, you know, becoming a yoga teacher is not so much like becoming a school teacher or, you know, nothing against school teachers, obviously, but it's very different, right? There's this something that we're trying to teach our students that should be coming again, if you want to be a master from you as a being who lives and breathes yoga. Now that doesn't mean that you have to be coming from the Himalayas meditating on a mountain type every time until you get to your students in the, in the yoga studio, but having time for meditation, meditating yourself, doing yoga yourself, practicing the principles, living a yogic lifestyle, doing as little harm as possible, keeping your living space clean and refreshed and Whatever you need to do to live a healthy, balanced life is the second step because you've taken the time to not only learn yoga, the fundamentals, the foundations, the principles, but you've already applied them to your own life. When we apply yoga to our own lives, something happens to our energetic system and we are able to radiate effortlessly radiate something of light, of peace, of knowledge, of wisdom to other people. And guess what? they can feel that. There's a reason that the monks and the masters and the gurus, right, they just have to sit and people, it's been said, can receive the teachings without the guru or the teacher having to say anything because they are it. And simply being in their presence is enough to actually translate the teachings. So you've got learning it first, you've got living it second, and then the final piece of this journey is sharing it. LLS. Learn it, live it, then you share it. Again, the sharing becomes natural because you are yoga. You are a peaceful person. You are practiced. You are practicing. One tip is if you are teaching yoga, if you're feeling uninspired ever, or, oh my gosh, how do I incorporate these three steps so I can level up my skills from teacher to master? One of my biggest tips would be Practice before you teach. So if you have a class plan to teach, whether a public class, a private class, a workshop, do your own practice beforehand. Whether you take a class, whether you go on a personal retreat before you lead your own retreat, or whether you just do a home practice so that you can actually get the yoga into your body. 
Something I do is I meditate for at least five minutes before I teach a yoga class or before I go and see a private client. So these are ways, again, to enhance your own energetic field so that you can share from a place of authenticity and from a place of ease so that it doesn't feel forced. So again, these are the steps. First, you gotta learn it, take your time, then you gotta live it, take your time, and then you share it. And the sharing of yoga and the success of yoga comes not through strain and effort, just like in the asana practice, just like in the physical practice. Even on the path of being a successful yoga teacher, this, tr this journey truly comes from uh, being it, being, being honest and authentic. It can be effortless, it can be automatic, Success can become natural the more that you take the time to water your seeds. Practice patience, trust the process. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. There's wonderful videos on many different ways to grow your personal yoga business. And check the links below. I have a lot of free resources for you as well as an upcoming 200 hour yoga teacher training this summer in Costa Rica. I look forward to hearing from you soon and I will see you in the next video. Namaste.